Hello and welcome to the Crowley ISD 2nd 6 Weeks 8th Grade Mathematics PLC Curriculum Preview. I am Haley Verum, the Elementary Math Coordinator. And I am Megan Dixon, the Secondary Math Coordinator. We look forward to working with teachers and instructional leaders throughout the school year. Please feel free to communicate with us any questions or for additional support. In this video, we will identify curriculum hotspots and provide real-time instructional strategies that include kinesthetic vocabulary, tips, and incorporate Fundamental 5 strategies. At the end of this video, teachers will complete the PLC for Math PLC for the new MathTeq 8.4c. The We Will, I Will statements shown are examples of how to frame a lesson as listed in the Fundamental 5. Before we begin exploring content for the second six weeks, let's take a moment to reflect back on the first six weeks. Please pause the video and discuss the following questions. Based on your data from previous units, where are opportunities to reteach? How will you spiral in and assess the reteaching opportunities? What is a teaching strategy or intervention you implemented in your classroom during the first six weeks that worked well for you? What is something you might adjust to work better for your students in your classroom? Units covered in the second six weeks are Unit 4, Developing an Understanding of Slope and Y-Intercept and Unit 5, Proportional and Non-Proportional Functions. Please pause the video to review the Unit 4 Local Assessment Blueprint. Take time to note the instructional days and assessment posting and administration dates. Now take a moment to review the Unit 5 Local Assessment Blueprint. For today's PLC purpose, materials teachers will need are the Unit 4 IFD, organizing instruction using the TEAK standard types document, and PLC for Math PLC document, as well as green, yellow, and blue highlighters. Before we complete the content builder for the upcoming units, let's take a minute and review the process TEKS as well as understand the structure of the content builder. Process standards are the bookends for learning. Without them, the standards, called the books for the, this purpose, would fall off the shelf. Process standards are used in every unit and with different content, used kindergarten through 12th grade, linked to college and career readiness standards, increased rigor of learning, are used for formative assessment, and are highly tested on STAR. Today, we will focus on these two orange statements as we plan our instruction. Now let's discuss what the purpose of the content builder is. When breaking down the IFD and placing the standards in the correct box, it is important to know what those standards mean. Readiness standards are the important content to learn and apply and are essential for success in the current grade level. Supporting standards are the content students will need to learn first. These are usually TEKS that were taught in the previous grade. This is the content that helps the students get there. The process standards are the skills embedded through the lessons for increased rigor. These help students show they know. The readiness and supporting standards in this illustration represent what the teacher is teaching the students about the identified skills. The process standards represent the learning. It is the I know the students have learned it when they are able to do these types of things. This is the way that the teacher can plan for formative assessment. Every eight to 10 minutes, teachers can stop to see if students are accessing their learning or if they are demonstrating their learning. At this time, we will be using the organizing instruction using the TEAK standard types document. For the purpose of today's PLC curriculum preview, we will be using the Unit 4 IFD, Developing an Understanding of Slope and Y-Intercept. At this time, please read the TEKS listed on pages 7 through 15 of the IFD. As you review the TEKS, highlight in yellow the supporting standards and highlight the readiness standards in green. All remaining standards are process standards and will be highlighted in blue. If necessary, please refer to the organizing instruction using the TEKS standard types document to review the description and each standard's role in learning. Remember that blue process standards will fall into one of two basic categories, how students access learning or how students demonstrate learning. Please take a moment to complete this task. 
Now use the highlighted IFD as a key to place each standard in the corresponding color-coded graphic organizer. Now as you look back over your completed content builder, keep in mind that the blue represents the process standards because the process standards flow through everything we do. The green readiness standards grows learners. For the yellow readiness standards, slow down and help the students get there. As part of the PLC process, the what, we will discuss our identified hotspot using a heat map. For the second six weeks in eighth grade math, there are no targeted hotspot TEKS assessed on STAR because it is new to the eighth grade curriculum. Therefore, like during the first six weeks video, we will focus on a new TEK, 8.4C. Now let's focus specifically on the new TEK. As you can see, this is a readiness standard. This standard is part of reporting category two, computations and algebraic relationships, which makes up 41% of the STAR blueprint assessment. When reviewing the standard, make sure to identify the cognitive level. These are the verbs that define what the students will be able to do. The content level, which is the overall concept that students will learn and in what context it will be taught. Please take a moment to pause the video to look on pages 13 through 15 of the Unit 4 IFD and review the standard and unit level specificity. The second part of the PLC process is the so what, which addresses the implications and also gives teachers the chance to reflect upon teaching practices. At this time, we will pause for small group purposeful talk to discuss seed questions, both of which are attributes of the fundamental five. Seed questions are essential to guiding and focusing conversations to the desired learning outcomes. During this time, focus specifically on the previously identified TEK. The questions for discussion are, what concepts did students learn in the previous grade to prepare them? Look at how the student will use that concept in subsequent grades. Will the way you teach it help prepare students for future learning? What underdeveloped concepts play a role in student success of the targeted skill? What common misconceptions deter students from being successful? From the listed vocabulary, which terminology will play a key role to ensure mastery? And how have you taught this content in the past, or how will you teach it differently this year? Please keep in mind that small group purposeful talk about the learning typically lasts between 30 seconds and 3 minutes per question. Please pause the video at this time to allow for discussion. Before we begin to plan for instruction, Let's discuss the ability of students to transfer learning. Transfer of learning is the ability to apply knowledge learned in one context to new context. The learner recognizes common features among concepts, skills, or principles, links the information to memory. This is when students say, oh, I know when to use that. The learner sees the value of utilizing what was learned in one situation in another. This is when students can show their learning not only when a sample looks like what the teacher gave, but also when it does not. The Now What piece of the PLC curriculum preview starts with using the PLC for Math PLC page as a tool for creating lessons. Classroom instruction will move to a higher level of understanding as well as offer opportunities for students to transfer information. After the readiness standard, 8.4C has been selected, how can I plan for transfer? What resources do you have available to use as a stimulus? Take time now to discuss the stimulus that could be used to address 8.4C. Remember the stimulus will be what gets the students engaged in the learning. Now let's review the verbs in the student expectation. Which thinking activities will match the rigor for this level of blooms? Now discuss two to five thinking opportunities for students to demonstrate how they will process the information. This will occur every eight to 10 minutes during the whole group instruction. Please pause to complete this task. Look at the evidence of learning column. Discuss and select an appropriate product that can be used to show evidence of student learning, which matches the rigor of our hotspot TEK. Questions to think about when select evidence of learning. How will students demonstrate their thinking? How will we know when students have mastered the concept? 
Once you have selected an end product or evidence of learning, you will use high yield instructional strategies to support student learning. From the instructional strategies column, we will demonstrate kinesthetic vocabulary and tips, which will highlight the use of engaging vocabulary strategies. This is not an exhaustive list of instructional strategies. Please feel free to choose other high yield instructional strategies. The next slides will provide videos demonstrating kinesthetic vocabulary and tips. Here is an example of kinesthetic learning or vocabulary in action in a Crowley High School classroom. Hi, I'm Monica Moore and I teach pre-cal and calculus at Crowley High School. And um, in those classes I like to use a lot of kinesthetic learning and most recently we did it with our parent functions. So answer me this, where is your left hand? Going up or going down? Yeah. Down. Where is your right hand? Oh. Up. Okay, now show me negative x. What? Okay, where is your left hand? Oh. Where is your right hand? Yes. Down. Okay. First I have all the students stand up and together we model the parent functions with our arms. Y equals X to the second power, aka X squared. Then I ask probing questions that um, make them think critically about the graphs that they're showing me with their arms. To the third. It's got a little curve to it, it's not quite a straight line. Show me what X to the my favorite number 13 would look like. What would it probably do? Probably get narrower. Okay, let's talk about left hand. Where's your left hand? Down. Where's your right hand? Okay, that's also called end behaviors. Now show me uh, negative x to the 13. Okay, where's your right hand? Your other right. Your other right. That's adorable though. I tricked you. <laughs> where's your right hand? Down. Where's your right, left hand? Okay. Are they in the same location or opposite locations? Okay. Based on the fact that it takes the average student six times to learn a new word, teachers can create a chart with three columns. Term, information, and picture to help students learn new words. This is better than just a vocab chart because there's a 35% increase in retention of words if there is a picture. Again, this can be an evolving chart that's stuck on the wall and acts as a reference for students as you move through content. Another integral part of the Now What is intervention. Take time now to discuss the following questions and what they may look like on your campus. How will we provide students with additional time and support in a timely, directive, and systematic way when students experience difficulty? How can we enrich the learning of students who are already proficient? We appreciate you participating in the PLC curriculum preview. When you plan on implementing kinesthetic vocabulary or tips, please invite us in as we would love to see classroom implementation. If you have any suggestions for future curriculum previews, please submit ideas to megan.dixon at crowley.k12.tx.us. Also, I would like to hear from you if you have an instructional strategy that you would like to showcase in an upcoming video. Finally, please be sure to submit a copy of the PLC for Math PLC document and Content Builder to the appropriate campus designee. Thank you for your time.